we're very excited to see a series of important and very interesting data sets present at ASCO GU 2021 in the field of urothelial cancer, you know, in the continuum spectrum of disease from early stages of muscle invasive bladder cancer through muscle invasive disease and metastatic urothelial cancer settings. And I would like to briefly comment on a, on a few of those data sets. For example, we saw the data uh, from the adjuvant Checkmate 274 trial evaluating the adjuvant role of nivolumab, anti-PD-1 versus placebo in patients who had radical cystectomy or nephrourethectomy for bladder or upper trigurothelial cancer, respectively. And uh, these patients could have received uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, but neoadjuvant chemotherapy was not mandatory uh, for inclusion in the study. Uh, the primary point uh, that was disease-free survival in all comers intent to treat population as well as a subset of patients with pd positive tumors based on this specific companion assay was met and there was significant difference favoring uh, nivolumab versus placebo in the adjuvant setting. And there was a notable difference. Uh, I think the uh, hazard ratios was uh, really impressive, uh, especially uh, in the pd positive subset with hazard ratio 0 0.53, but also uh, the difference was striking uh, in the all camera population uh, with a, a significant uh, numerical difference as well in terms of median disease-free survival, favoring nivolumab over placebo. And I think that's, uh, that's important uh, because it's the first immunotherapy adjuvant trial that is positive. Um, and this is in uh, uh, context of the negative in vigor 010 trial that tested the atezolizumab versus observation. Uh, what we did not see at ASCO GU, uh, uh, we did not see overall survival data from the Checkmate 274. And uh, I think visual data will be interesting to see. Uh, however, there's a big debate in the field right now uh, whether people uh, will or not change practice uh, based on the disease survival striking difference, uh, impressive difference in the absence of overall survival. And I think this debate keeps uh, uh, going uh, in, in different meetings, social media and, and beyond. And I think it remains to be seen uh, what the regulatory agencies will do in terms of uh, approval or not of uh, adjuvant evolumab uh, in this setting. I think uh, this is also interesting in the context of two ongoing trials, the ambassador adjuvant pembrolizumab versus uh, observation that is still ongoing and accruing patients, uh, which is an effort led by Dr. Apollo in the NCI and there's a cooperative group. And also the PROOF 302 trial, adjuvant infigratinib, FGF receptor inhibitor versus placebo in patients who have tumors with FGFR3 mutation or fusion. And this trial, PROOF302, is, is still uh, ongoing. And I think it's very important to accrue in that study as well. And also, we, we saw updated data from Dr. Bertel in uh, UK about the PAUT phase three trial that looking at adjuvant chemotherapy, cisplatin gemcitabine chemotherapy or carboplatin gemcitabine chemotherapy in the upper tract disease. Uh, and this study um, uh, showed the disease for survival benefit with adjuvant uh, cisplatin gemcitabine in this patient population. So I think it's interesting to uh, uh, see this data uh, uh, from the Checkmate 274 in the context of what else is happening in the field in the adjuvant setting. It's also worth mentioning there are uh, uh, many phase three perioperative trials looking at immune checkpoint inhibitors in combinations um, uh, in the neoadjuvant and adjuvant setting that I think will be interesting to see what these perioperative trials will show in the future.